I got an internet slumberger uh, after my third year, uh, and uh, from the first year itself, that when we started thinking of companies which we'll be joining later on, slumberger used to be one of the dream companies for most of the people, and a lot of people uh, started the resume building process from the first year itself, and we're always known that the company recruits people having good extracurriculars, having NCC credentials, having a good uh, physique, probably sports as well, and someone who's an all-rounder kind. So. By third year, when we got the notice of the Schlumberger company coming for our internship, uh, almost every branch, it's, it's one of the very few companies which is open for most of the branches. So almost every person in all the branches, they applied for this internship. And uh, there were like around 500 odd people, I'm not sure what the applicants were, like 500 odd people applied for the whole thing. Out of which, uh, we know that around 30, 40 are usually selected shortlisted from the resume basis. Now the shortlisting criteria at times is considered pretty random because uh, no one knows what they actually see. There have been friends of mine who have been having a CGP of 9 with extra curriculars being very good but still they didn't make it through to the next round. But what I saw basically was they were looking for people uh, with a difference. Uh, Schlumberg is one of the very few companies which actually recruits future managers. They're, they're uh, one of the companies which uh, tend to make their employees promote to the managerial level. They don't uh, want to recruit a lot of managers from the outside. And that is why they look for people uh, from the ITs and all who are good at technical stuff at the same time who can actually live up to the expectation of a future manager. So uh, in the extracurriculars they look for your resume in which you have mentioned activities which are a little different, a little unorthodox at times and also they want to see a holistic perspective from your side as in you approach different areas and you like being uh, in multifarious uh, uh, areas. So uh, once the shortlist came out, uh, there were four GD groups which were formed and uh, we had known a few uh, GD topics such as bricks are strong and pigs are flying and these topics were uh, had been asked in some of the IITs and uh, these topics really stunned us because we knew that the GDs will start in like two hours and most of us went back to our rooms and we started searching on these things. What are pigs, what are bricks and then we realized it's, oh, it's Brazil, Russia, India, China and this pigs is Portugal, Italy, whatever. So uh, when we got onto the GD, uh, we were very tense but at the same time a few of us were very confident because we had gone through a lot of topics which we thought might come and Shlam was uh, known to have uh, repeated topics uh, in previous years. So I entered the room and uh, there were two panelists there, uh, a male and a female. Uh, they seemed experienced and a little old. One of them was young but the lady seemed a little old, around 30, 30 40. So, uh, we, got, we sat down and uh, the slum people they treat you very well and they provide you with water bottles and everything. So that sort of eases it for some time but uh, then you still have the tension going on. And then they gave us a topic. My topic specifically was uh, when playing with your boss you must always lose. And when we heard this topic we were actually a little happy as well because we, we knew that this was a topic everyone could speak a little about. You don't need to know something different for this topic. And they said that you have one minute think about what you want to do. Now the only thing usually when you're talking, uh, when you're given one minute, the only thing you're thinking about is what the other person is thinking. Because you don't, in that one minute, you're not able to calm yourself to the point that you can say, okay, this is the framework in which I'll be working in. So the GD uh, starts randomly and this is one person who starts the GD. Now he tries to say something uh, which is very usual as in, uh, since in the corporate world there's a saying, boss is always right. So you should always follow that because it's set for a reason. And then uh, I remember uh, having read a lot about philosophy and psychology, these are some of my strong points. So I somehow related it to some of the cardinals since you have one of them being envy. So I'll say that, I said that if I am a boss, or for that matter take an analogous situation in which I am a senior and I have a junior, and my junior is progressing at a faster rate, I'll obviously be envious and I don't want him to do that. Because it's human nature, you're not living in an ideal world here, you're living in a real world. And uh, I just made a few points there and there. And then when I saw a few people agreeing with what I said, I just laid back because I knew that I had done my work. And uh, every a lot of people, there were a lot of people in the in the GD process who spoke a lot, uh, who spoke more than I did and much more actually. But they didn't make it through. The reason is because they wanted to hear people having different ideas who can contribute to a GD. As in there have been other GDs uh, like Houston, there's a problem, which is specific to a topic or a book or a story. But even if you don't know that story and you come up with an idea which is totally different, then these people say that this guy has the ability to think differently and therefore they select the guy. So basically they're not looking for someone who has acute knowledge and issues or who is very, who reads a newspaper regularly. They just want someone who can look at things with a different angle. And that is why, that is how they uh, shortlist people for the next round. So in my group there were eight people. 
So it was like four groups, so eight people each, and from there they uh, shortlisted three people for the interview round. So in all, by by the end, like 13 people were selected for the uh, interviews. Now the other jury topics were pretty. Some of them were pretty lame. Some of them were pretty different. One topic, one good topic was life minus IIT. So it was very relevant, and people spoke. I'm not sure what exactly was said, but but one of the topics was uh, who is Alice and what is she doing in Baghdad. So there are there there were people there were people who had uh, heard of this topic before because this topic was used in IIT Kharagpur, and some of them had read it. But somehow some people said it is related to financial markets. Somehow they related it to that, and you know in a slum GD is a typical GD where you might start from one point and within 10 seconds you have no clue from how how you went from that point to the other point. If someone talks about financial markets, the other person says oh line markets. So the other person says no, I think Alice is in Wonderland, and. It's just totally, total chaos at times uh, in the GD. You just need to keep calm during the GD. At the same time, you have to ensure that your point is made and the group recognizes your point. That is what they're looking for. And uh, other topics was, uh, one one last topic was, uh, they started with one word, something like Inception. Then from Inception, they went to Harry Potter. They added topics in one minute duration. Then from Harry Potter, they went to Roger Federer. And subsequently, five, six topics. And in the end, they asked one person to conclude which was a pretty tough task for the person, but that person eventually made it because he somehow related them in a weird way, but in a funny way. So humor and wit also counts at times during the interview, during the GD. Now, coming to the interview session, uh, we had again two panels, and uh, usually what happens is one, when you're going for a slum interview, you know that they won't be asking any technical thing. It'll mostly be based on your HR, and they want to see you for the person you are. It's probably a level below Rodi's, but uh, it's different. And Rodi's I know is not appreciated too much by people, but it's like they really want to know who you really are as a person and how you're different from the others. That was, that's what they're looking for. So I entered the interview room and uh, I was in front of the two panelists. Uh, since there were two panels, one panel was there for your GD and the other panel is the one for your interview. So they uh, rotated the whole thing. and. Uh, I went in for the interview and they asked me a couple of questions, tell us something about yourself. And I started off by introducing a little wit and humor, that is usually what I want to do in an interview. But what happened was I could see the person in front of me not giving me any expressions or saying anything at all. He didn't even, he didn't even give a smile. Usually in an interview when a person gives you a reaction, you at least get to know whether you are doing it the right way or the wrong way. There was no reaction from the front side and I said to myself, dude, stop. It's enough now. Uh, go on if he's serious and you be serious. So then he asked me a couple of questions, tell us something about yourself and I mentioned the hobbies which I thought were a little different and which I thought I could justify if he asked me subsequent questions. Uh, later on in the interview, uh, after five minutes and all, he asked me something related to leadership skills and where have you portrayed them. So this was one of the questions which I had not actually thought about too much and uh, I sat there almost dumbfounded for uh, a minute or so. and. Uh, I looked at the water bottles and I also wanted some time to think so I said, sir can I have some water please? It was actually the first time ever I asked for water in the interview and he said, haha take it, it's only for you. So okay, I said okay. So I took one gulp but I thought I didn't think enough for the answer so I took another one and after the initial two gulps uh, then I made up something, fabricated something which I knew he couldn't uh, scrutinize much and then that was that. So the guy said that I, I believe uh, you've said a lot but uh, we still aren't, still aren't convinced that uh, you'll be a very good leader and kinds. So I said, sir, whatever I've said is the truth and I've done, I haven't done much uh, above this. So if I can't convince you this, probably this is the best I can do. So that was one of the points where I thought maybe it's a, it's a good answer. But still, the reactions weren't there at all. Because uh, later on I found out it was actually the placement coordinator. Uh, and a lot of people had been complaining about the same thing. This guy doesn't give a reaction. So... Uh, the interview went on, uh, the guy asks me about my hobby, from where I come, uh, what are my interests and it's just general HR interview questions and they ask, the craziest thing that you've done is a question which was asked for some of the people not to be and I'm glad it wasn't me because one thing I realized was that in front of these people sometimes what happens is you tend to give answers which you think may be very stylish and maybe very impressive, the bond answers as you call them but uh, at times these things don't work. And you need to show them that uh, even though you're coming for this company and you're confident in what you've done and your hobbies and all, you're still not trying to be smart or over smart. So uh, I came out of the interview and they asked me in the end, uh, do you want to ask us any questions? So I just said, sir, your name. 
your names. So they told me your names and I was like, okay. I actually wanted to ask them if I could give the interview again because I thought my interview had gone uh, pretty different from what I had expected when I uh, entered the room. Because when you enter the room, you have this uh, impression in your mind that by the end of the interview, I want the interviewer to have this particular image of me. But when, you, when I came out of the interview, I thought I had given a completely different image because quick-wittedness and uh, communication skills were two things which I were always very confident about. Communication skills still played, much played the part, but wit was zero in the entire interview and I felt very incomplete without it. And I came out of the interview room and I was always convinced that I won't get selected because Shalom usually last year they selected just two people for the internship. So I thought maybe my chances would be very slim this time. And then uh, in my panel I saw other people entering the interview room and coming out and they were whenever they came out people asked that how the interview and everyone was like the interview was fine and the interviews were impressed and all and I knew that I was gone after that because when you see uh, four out of the six people saying the interview was fine and the interview went well you feel uh, low and you feel that you haven't done your best so uh, eventually uh, all the interviews were over the whole process started around uh, six o'clock the GDs uh, included and the interview process went on till uh, 12 or 1 o'clock and uh, then they came out with the results. Now, what I found out was later on that the second panelists were actually looking for someone who could make them laugh. So, the second panelists, they uh, wanted to see people who were very, very impressive in that way and who were also smart. They do, both the panelists had a different way of judging. It's not that they were judging different things. They had a different way of going about it. As in, uh, from the second panelist, every single interview, every single interview, they came out happy. Everyone was like, I think I've done my best and I'm I, I'm almost sure I'll get selected. Everyone was like that, but uh, there were very few people who were selected on that panel also. So in the end when the results came out, they selected a total of five people. Uh, mine was the first name called out and I was, I just, there's like a lot of people uh, think that uh, drugs are the ultimate path to, to ecstasy, but try getting a job offer or an internship. The moment they call out your name, it's it's like a different world. And knowing that it's Schlumberger and they've selected uh, you as uh, one of the, you may, you feel confident in yourself also after that. So, uh, I know I'm getting a little sentimental as some of my friends are whispering right now, but uh, <laughs> that's not the case. This was the real thing that was happening that day. Uh, after uh, the whole internship, like five people were selected uh, from BTEC. And they selected people from Geotech and Geophysics as well, but they those people uh, mentioned that they had a technical interview. So this was my internship uh, till the point I got the internship. And after that we had a medical test a few uh, days later. And eventually I had my internship in Bombay. Now uh, during, the, during the internship, uh, everyone, there were like around 50 of us uh, from uh, different IITs included people from BTEC and a few people from Geotech and Geophysics. We, we spent around a week in Bombay where uh, unlike the other uh, interns where people were being taught, uh, taught about technical stuff and how to work with these machines and how to handle these machines. We were being taught about seat belts and safety and how do you manage yourself on a rig, the exercises that you should do to keep yourself fit. And we actually did a few exercises in the classroom itself uh, during that one week period. It was in the office, uh, <coughs> our office classroom kind. So uh, that week was uh, very good because I met a lot of different people. And there's one thing very good with Shalom. You'll meet a lot of people who coming who are coming from varied backgrounds, and uh, you tend to meet new people uh, with having new interests and everything. So that was very good part of the fifty uh, of the one week. And uh, in that one week, uh, we stayed at a very good uh, location. As in all, everything was being arranged for. Everything was arranged for our transportation, our accommodation, everything was arranged, was arranged beautifully, the whole thing. And after a week, we were sent off to our respective locations. Uh, my location was in Bombay itself. It was an office. It wasn't a rig. A few of my friends went to a rig where they had to work much harder than I did in the office. And uh, in the office, uh, we were each assigned uh, mentors, managers, and FTCs as, they call, as we call them. FTCs are field training champions who have been in the field for many years. So... Uh, I remember uh, it was I think 8th of June when I first uh, entered that uh, first went to my mentor and met him and he told me that uh, enjoy your next month and work well and enjoy it that was the whole thing uh, I also remember during the one week period we had people who had been working for 20-25 years managers who told us about what the internship experience uh, basically is for and they mentioned three things they mentioned uh, fun they mentioned uh, lifestyle and they mentioned work and someone actually asked them, sir, what is the order in which you want us to follow these? So they said, first priority should be fun, second should be uh, lifestyle, and third should be work. And uh, 
when I went there and I did the internship, I actually realized this is not uh, just some talk. This is really true because I had a lot of fun during my internship. The place we stayed, the people I met there, the football games that we had in the evening, everything was very, very good. Now, during the internship, uh, they assign you different segments. As in Shlamboji works in different segments, uh, like drilling and testing. And uh, everyone has their own mentor. So I had a few friends in that office and a few friends, uh, as I mentioned, in uh, Gujarat and in Barmer and in Kakinara. So uh, at Bombay, uh, I was in the testing segment. And I had a mentor who told me about uh, the work there. And he told me to, uh, since this was my first internship in the oil industry, he said rather than focusing on any specific projects, you should have a general overall knowledge of the oil industry and what you are basically doing at Shlam. So uh, even though I wasn't assigned a specific project initially, uh, I spent a couple of weeks in trying to understand what the whole oil industry and what my particular segment was doing which I thought was really good because usually when you go to an industry and you're assigned a project on day one, you don't really bother much about learning of the other aspects of the industry, which is very essential once you're going to an industry you haven't been before. So that was it for a couple of weeks and uh, then later on I was assigned this project. Since I was in an office and not in a rig, the project couldn't be a very practical and oil rig related one. They assigned me something related to the maintenance department and maintenance of uh, inventories and something related to that. And uh, it wasn't very hard, it wasn't very difficult. I had to prepare a few excel sheets, study a few tools, uh, part descriptions and all. And once I was done at the end of uh, the whole internship experience for six weeks, uh, out of which one week you spend at Bombay in the initial training I mentioned, and after that five weeks for a specific location. So at the end of the sixth week I had to give a presentation. Uh, during my presentation there were around four to five people who were uh, judging me based on that. And the judgment criteria for which they give you a PPO later on is based on how you perform during the internship how your mentor perceives you as in how your mentor feels if this person will be able to fit in the industry. Because uh, Schlumberger as a company is very different from the other companies. Uh, you have a lifestyle and when they mentioned lifestyle as one of your key aspects of learning during the internship, they actually meant it because the lifestyle at Schlumberger is very different from other companies. Uh, during my internship I was staying in a guest house and often the guest house had five rooms and there were often moments when all the five rooms were occupied by people from different nationalities. So it is a very good experience for someone, uh, specifically when you're talking about countries as uh, varying from as varying as uh, France to people from Africa and people from Libya. So I met a lot of people there and I made a lot of friends there. So the whole internship experience actually is also they're also judging you based on how compatible you are with people. How you can that's the reason why initially in the GD they look for different ideas because they know people are coming from different backgrounds. How you're able to get along with other ideas and how you're able to contribute in order to make a single decision in any uh, workplace uh, situation. So uh, this was what, how the mentor judged me and I, I suppose this was the this was the major part of it. Uh, besides that he uh, judged me on the basic understanding of the segment, how cooperative I was during the entire internship experience, how uh, learning, uh, how much I was uh, into learning, how much I wanted to know, uh, my inquisitiveness regarding the industry and how much I was willing to contribute in whatever I was doing. And they wanted people who were a little serious, at the same time people who could have fun. So we used to have uh, parties also, but when it's office time, they don't, you don't have uniforms there. They don't care uh, what you're wearing as long as you're doing things correctly and you're doing, you can uh, surf net during the office as there's no problem as long as you're working properly. And uh, when I came back after the internship experience, uh, we had a feedback form to fill in that we had to rate uh, and that was uh, to be a very candid thing that's what I now know because uh, they wanted you to tell them specifically how was your internship experience what were the things that you thought were not good and could have been improved for the future uh, internees and you need to mention them with honesty because uh, after all these people once were candidates and they know the whole uh, process and the whole thing how the whole thing works so I filled up that feedback form and after a month or so the results came in for the PPOs uh, and I was uh, selected for the job and that day was again good.